Cuphead was a highly anticipated, much delayed indie game making waves because of its visual style. In the style of classic 1930s animation like Max Fleischer, it's easily one of the most stunning games visually. The gorgeous animation is matched by additional flourishes, such as film dirt and scratches, matched with that old-timey jazz soundtrack underneath it all. There's no question that it's a retro, 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 retro aesthetic, and it is nearly perfected. It looks and sounds like an old cartoon, and narratively it's on point as well, taking a somewhat goofy sense of humor and applying it to a story that underneath it all is actually kind of dark. However, aesthetics don't make a game. It can be beautiful to look at, but that doesn't do it any good if the game is actually miserable to play. So how does Cuphead do in the gameplay department? Well, it's sort of a mixed bag. Being involved in the gaming community for most of my life, I can safely assume that some, if not most, of this criticism will be completely and immediately dismissed, followed by everyone's favorite totally legitimate response to gaming criticism, GET GOOD! <laughs> See, Cuphead is a hard, sometimes brutally so game. The issue I take with the design of the game is not that they chose to make it very challenging, although I do have some questions about that in a bit, but rather the way that it seeks to make it challenging. Cuphead is a retro game beyond its aesthetics. It takes a lot of its cues from old arcade and early home console games. It's part platformer, part boss rush, and even part bullet hell, with the general design philosophy that it should be easy to pick up but difficult to master. Alternatively, mechanically simple yet very difficult. The game itself would be fairly described as a rage game, one designed to frustrate players for hours with the expectation that once you defeat the boss, it's immensely gratifying. But I'm not quite sure it works as that. With the majority of the game being boss fights, it's important that the game be fair at the same time that it's difficult. Cuphead succeeds some of the time, but other times it doesn't. The good boss fights are actually pretty great, but the bad ones stand out just as much. It almost takes a page from the Fury playbook by throwing so much at you on screen at one time that it's really difficult to follow what's even happening. Consider the battle with Captain Brinybeard. The first half is totally manageable, if lasting too long for its own good. As you grind down the enemy's invisible health bar, the game ratchets everything up. At any given time, you could have the barrel at the top of the screen moving left to right about to drop down. You could have the captain calling in sea creatures to join in, in which one is a shark jumping in from the left side of the screen. At the same time, the captain is shooting pellets out of an octopus face on the right-hand side of the screen. At some point, you will also have the boat itself shooting constant cannonballs from the right. The game is demanding your attention at the top of the screen, the left of the screen, and the right of the screen all at one time. It's overwhelming and increasingly infuriating when the squid makes the screen darker, thus making it even more difficult to actually see what the hell is happening. The game is constantly demanding that you pay attention to different parts of the screen at once. Grim Matchstick, for example, also demands that you pay attention to the left, the right, and the bottom at the same time. During the second stage, the dragon shows up to the left, which you need to try to avoid or running into or getting too close to, otherwise you'll take damage. At the same time, little fireballs walk along the tongue from left to right at the bottom of the screen. Those creatures can jump at random and also sometimes appear to have psychic abilities. The entire time, you also have to be careful to stay on the cloud platforms that are entering from the right. This isn't always a problem, but it sometimes becomes one due to the game's randomization. There are often situations in which a game will randomize platforms that make it impossible for the player to avoid taking damage, which in a game where you only take three hits to die is a pretty big flippin' deal. In some of my battles with Rumor Honeybottom, she would spit out bullets or her pink balls and triangles that must be quickly avoided, but the game wouldn't randomly generate platforms in a manner that I could actually escape them without getting hit first, or it would put me in a position where to avoid a bullet I have to fall into the honey, in which case either way I take damage, which is unfair. Beppy the Clown is maybe the perfect example of how randomization can sometimes screw the player. During the second stage of the fight, Beppy will lower on either the left or the right hand side of the screen at random, shoot out a line of horseshoes horizontally splitting the screen, and then the roller coaster train will show up to streak across the bottom. Because these attacks and positions are all randomized, including the timing, you can easily find yourself in a position where avoiding the train means jumping into the horseshoes or even Beppy himself. These are just boss mechanics that often feel frustrating in the worst ways and makes the difference between feeling satisfying upon defeating them and annoyed relief. Randomization is a part of every game, and you can look at other challenging games to see how. 
Perhaps the most popular of these difficult games is the Dark Souls series. In these cases, bosses have various attacks that are all clearly telegraphed and used at random. Some bosses are more random than others, but by virtue of the obvious tells that each move has, it often doesn't feel unfair. The game doesn't often put you in a position where anything you do results in damage. Rather, it puts you in a position where your delayed reading of an impending attack or a mistimed roll is what causes damage. So while other difficult games like Dark Souls, Hotline Miami, or VVVVVV feel very fair, Cuphead doesn't always. It's actually kind of half and half, and some of the bosses are unreasonably satisfying to defeat, and others are just unreasonable. Worst of all is an element of the aesthetics that come at the cost of the game. Adding things like a foreground is visually neat and a throwback to the 1930s cartoons they emulate, but when you make a video game, it's generally ill-advised to block any part of the screen. This happens more frequently in run and gun levels. For example, Funfair Fever features an insane amount of crap in the foreground. Trees blocking your view while objects roll around trying to kill you is such a bad idea it's a little confounding why they put that in in the first place. This is just a case of the aesthetics superseding the game. The focus on visual style outweighed its impact on the gameplay to its detriment. Some will likely dismiss this as just me wanting my games to be too easy. It's perhaps worth noting that I love Dark Souls and VVVVVV. I love Super Meat Boy and Hotline Miami and Fury, although that game also does a few things that I don't feel like are entirely fair. I'm not looking for Cuphead to be easy, I just want it to be consistently fair, and these are elements that make it feel otherwise. But on that note, why exactly did they make Cuphead so limiting in its appeal as a game? I appreciate games built around the satisfaction of overcoming great obstacles, but why does Cuphead, of all games, want to only be that? It's true that you can play most of the game on the simple difficulty, and beating all the bosses in one world on simple will still allow the player to advance to the next world, but only to a point. The final world and bosses are not accessible until the bosses have all been defeated on the regular difficulty, meaning you cannot beat the game on simple. I question this decision because of the aesthetic appeal of the game. Cuphead takes all of the best visual and audio cues from old school animation, things that were largely made for or appealed to children. That there isn't a mode at all for children seems strange. Beyond kids, I've personally heard from a number of non-gamer friends who expressed interest in the game after seeing footage online or seeing me play. Great! The aesthetics give it such a wide appeal, I'd love to share this game with those friends. Except that there is no chance in hell that those friends would play this game for more than 10 minutes. It's just too difficult for casual players. And yes, 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 I hear all those gamers out there arguing that games shouldn't cater to casual fans because... Actually, no. I don't really, I don't really get it. Why, why do they not want? Why do gamers not want people playing games? I don't. I don't. It's like an affront to their honor, I guess, to make games accessible and make games fun for the maximum number. I don't, I don't know something. It should be noted, and then immediately disregarded by hardcore gamers, that I am not advocating they remove the super challenging difficulties, or even make that the default. I am simply advocating for the option for easier modes for children, or people new to gaming, or those of us who maybe find the amount of junk on the screen so goddamn overstimulating that we can barely keep track of where we are because OH MY GOD IT'S SO BRIGHT IT'S HURTING MY EYES! Game Some of us gamers are also aging. People age. That's that's people age. Your our eyes get worse. I, I'm not just like my. I'm not choosing to have bad eyes. It's just a, you know, like I'm not 20 years old anymore. You know, like I can't. You know, it's just a. It's just like aging. You know, like we, we gamers do it too. It's not. It's, it's not a choice. This aspect of Cuphead makes it a strangely disappointing game to me. It seems like a completely botched opportunity to invite new players into gaming. It's so appealing to so wide of an audience across the board in terms of its visuals, but then it sets out to punish players. I still overall enjoyed my time with the game, to a point at least, and I definitely think that if you do spend a lot of time on games, or maybe you like arcade games trying to kill you so quickly so that you'll put more quarters in it, Cuphead is absolutely something that you need to check out. I'm just not so sure that it does a ton of game design things super well.